Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It's Tuesday night and we're gonna create some art. Uh, I'm losing a track of the days here, uh, but it is Tuesday night, I, I'm pretty sure, I, I think so. Um, and uh, we are gonna create some art, it's going to be awesome. Um, what I'm working on tonight is I'm continuing with the um, the coffee painting series. Uh, it seems like every Tuesday night I, I do one of these. And the reason why is because I'm trying to build up uh, that portfolio of like 30 pictures roughly. Because uh, the idea is, like, if I do enough of these, then maybe I have enough to take to, like, an art show at some point, or at the very least, something to kind of, like, hang up and hang up on some walls somewhere and kind of, like, be representative of the kind of work I do. Um, but, you know, just playing it by ear. Uh, I, so far, I think I've got, well, I've got less than 10. I think it's, like, um, I don't know, somewhere in the 7 or 8 range. I'll have to go back and look. But um, tonight we're working on a fox, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this one because the fox is kind of my spirit animal. Uh, every time I go for a walk at the uh, local park, I well, not every time, but I mean, a lot of the times, I, I seem to run into this fox, and and uh, I just love foxes; they're very cool. And um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to paint one tonight, so we're going to see how it goes. Um, I see kids in the room tonight. We got Okay Larry, we got Rome Dog, we got Relentless Mind Works, um, who says hello for me and Jocelyn. Cool. Um, and, uh, we've, well, I already mentioned kid. Cool. All right. So, uh, I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, so I've already kind of sketched out where I want this to go. You guys kind of know how this works. Uh, I start with kind of like a base coat and, uh, get some, uh, elements going there. Um, I think I forgot to, uh, turn on one of my little lights over here. So give me one second. There you go. All right. Just kind of light this up a little bit better. I don't know. My, my lighting in here sucks. I'm, I'm working on that guys, you know, low budget, uh, art show here. So hopefully your guys' this week is going well. Uh, I know mine has been. This has been a pretty good week for me so far. Um, you know, it's only Tuesday, so it can go terrible from here on out. But yeah, um, Relentless Mind Works. You were in here last week, too. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so I like to start with, like, you know, a big blob of uh, coffee down here at the bottom. This is really where... Uh, I feel like these, um, the whole metaphor that I spilled coffee on the paper and I'm creating art from it takes place because this really does kind of look like I spilled coffee down here. And I, I like that. I uh, Every time I do one of these pictures, I like to start with that just because it's really cool. I'm going to move Geppetto for a moment so that we can get that gravity thing going. I feel like this process is like, I don't know, it's down to a science now where we always start off this way. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Like, I feel like that just kind of splotted a little bit more than I wanted it to. So clean that up just a little bit and then go back to it. I want that left side there to kind of dribble. Yeah, just a little, oh, there we go. All right, cool. Okay. And then, you know, I always like to start with these like little, little streams here. Let them dry a little bit. This one's kind of cool because it's kind of going off to the side. That'll create some movement in the picture a little bit later. So that's cool. Um, so Rum Dog says, what's your ETA uh, RM? I don't know if you're talking to me or not. <laughs> like My estimated time of arrival is tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> On this picture, at least. So... Um, yeah, I'm going to add like a little bit more coffee down here just to get it going. Yeah, he, he's, uh, oh, you, you recognize the river dance there. Cool. Yeah, I like, I honestly, I, I didn't mean for him to be in like a river dance pose, but I do like river dance. We got um, St. Patrick's Day coming up pretty soon, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm not 100% Irish, but the family kind of is a little bit. And, um, you know, certainly at St. Patrick's Day, I kind of like participate in the Irish stuff. But then again, you know, like during Oktoberfest, I participate in the German stuff. So, you know, I'm not picking sides here. But the last name's Parnell, and that is kind of Irish. So we've got a little bit of a, um, it's mostly like English Irish. Like there's a, a little bit to it. Um, there was a guy named Charles Stewart Parnell who was pretty famous, but he was English. I think, I don't know. You guys are going to like, you guys are going to look up the history and be like, Jeremy don't know shit. <laughs> but that's probably true. All 
Oh, he's talking to you, Relentless. Okay, cool. Well, if you're driving, hopefully you drive safe. Uh, you shouldn't be watching this while driving. You can listen to me while you're driving if you want, but this is kind of a visual thing. I don't know if this is really something that you guys would want to uh, consume while driving. Maybe while riding. Like, you can be... You can watch this while riding in a car, as long as you're not driving. But at this point, um, you know, uh, the idea is to kind of get some of this tone in. Um, I learned a new term recently. I wrote it down somewhere. What did I say? Mass massing it in. Somebody called and said this process is massing it in. This is like where you're just adding a lot of form to your uh, to your subject here. I, I kind of like that, especially like with my um, my messy pictures that I do. <laughs> Jeremy O. Parnell. <laughs> I think just Parnell is um is is Irish. I'm not really sure. Like I think the Parnell is English technically, but there's like a lot of Parnells uh, in Ireland, and a lot of my family claim to be Irish. I don't really know. I've never done one of those like 23andMe's or anything like that. I'm too, like, uh, my brothers have done it. And so I could probably just like piece together from them what I am because like, it's not like the DNA be different for them than it would be for me. So I could probably figure that out. But now I claim to be Irish at St. Patrick's Day and I claim to be German at Oktoberfest and it just works out. Yeah. Um, this dance moves were provocative. What, river dance? Geppetto is a smooth criminal. I like that song. I even like the, uh, what is it, Alien Ant Farm version? But yeah, that, that's that's a good song. So, good. I really want to get in some of this uh, darkness around the eye because I, I don't want to um, spend too long without the eyes being kind of blocked in because um, they are kind of small in this picture. This is a 9 by 12 and I decided to go with the composition where, you know, the fox kind of takes up a lot of the the paper, but it's still a smaller paper. In my mind, so I've got different paper sizes, and in my mind, I'm trying to match the paper sizes to the animal I'm doing. So I've got a really small 8 inch by 8 inch uh, square paper, and I did a chipmunk on that. And then I've got a much larger uh, 12 inch by... Uh, I'm going to have to look it up. 12 inch by like 22 inch or something. It's, it's my larger paper. And I use that for like the large creatures, like a, I don't know, like a deer or, um, you know, just a large creature or like a horse or something like that. The large creatures that I've done. And then for like medium sized animals, like this fox here, I'm going with nine by 12. So that's kind of how I work this out in my mind, at least. I don't know. I'm probably overthinking it. But I do like, um, I at least like the, the metaphor of having these animals on appropriate size paper. I do enjoy doing these. These are a lot of fun and I don't think I'll ever get tired of them. I do like going off and doing other things while doing these. So I like that variety, but like even tonight I was like, eh, I don't know if I want to do a coffee painting tonight, but then it kind of went out in my head. I'm like, yeah, I got to do these coffee paintings. They're a lot of fun. Oh, um, let's see. Make sure that I'm following the chat. Sometimes I get lost in my own like train of thought or something. And I lose track of the chat. I'm here for you guys. So like, I want to be here to conversate with you guys. If I wanted to talk to myself, I could just do this like offline or something like that. I want to follow your conversation. Um, so I, I want to give you an update on that, um, that maker's mark bottle challenge thing that I'm doing. Um, the, uh, the deadline for entry was today and I did get mine in on time. I actually submitted mine a couple of days ago. Uh, I submitted coffee paintings, uh, on the maker's mark bottle. So out of all the things that I do, I decided to go with something that's probably going to be a little bit challenging because. I've got to get the paper onto the bottle. I need to get the paper affixed to the bottle. And then I want to decorate the rest of the bottle with kind of like 
I don't know, maybe some like paper mache kind of deal so that the um, the watercolor paper looks natural on the bottle. Anyway, point is, there's a lot to it. But um, I did submit my designs. Uh, they are going to be um, coffee paintings. So like out of all the different things that I, I do on here, um, I, like I could do like acrylic or I could use like glass paint or something like that. I feel like I could do well with those. But I chose to play it safe and go with the coffee paintings. Safe from a design perspective, kind of not say from a technical challenge um but i did submit those so I, I i was in uh before the deadline which is midnight tonight and then i guess we get to find out if we were accepted monday by monday so i guess any time between now and monday it could be like tomorrow it could be like i don't know it could be monday itself it could be like sunday i don't, I don't know but anyway i will let you guys know if i am accepted into that because that is going to be cool um um uh, i forgot to mention well no i, I did mention yeah um uh, i forgot to mention today what all that is about so like basically there was a local art thing where they they wanted people to decorate bourbon bottles with like original artwork uh, as a charity type thing. They're gonna auction these off. And since I do art and I also drink my fair share of bourbon, it just seemed pretty natural to me to uh, want to do that. So I have the opportunity to maybe decorate some uh, bourbon labels and, and stuff. So I'm not explaining it very well. You'll, you'll see if I, if I get accepted, if I don't get accepted, then it doesn't matter. Like if they don't like my design or whatever. Or, you know, there's only 94 slots, and I think they sent this email out to, like, a ton of people, so I may not be accepted just because, you know, tough competition, which I respect that. You know, there's better artists out there than me, so. But anyway, I did I did get my stuff in on time, which was kind of basically what I was doing. For the last half hour, I've been trying to say that, uh, yeah, I got my stuff in on time, so that's cool. Sometimes I flake and I miss deadlines, so. Thanks, kid. That's what I was thinking. I guarantee you that um, there is uh, there's nobody else submitting uh, coffee paintings. 100%. Just because, like, if you're going to paint on a bottle, there's easier ways to do it. Like, I'm making this more difficult than it needs to be. I just like the style of these, though. I think it'll look cool on the label. And then I have to kind of elevate the label a little bit so that's not just your boring label that might be on a bourbon bottle anyway. So we'll see how that goes. But I think it'll be fun. Plus it pays. Like uh, they, they uh, like I, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this or not, but they didn't say that I couldn't. So yeah, it, like if you actually do get accepted and um, you get to design a bottle, they pay you like $100 per bottle. Like, and the bottles aren't that big. They're only like, I don't know, like yay big. I don't know. Like smaller than this paper. So that'd be like awesome. More money to throw in the art supplies kitty. So all of this is always light for newcomers who, who's never seen me do one of these. Uh, I think everybody in this room has seen me do these before, but you know, if you're just like, you just stumbled upon this channel. If you just stumbled upon this channel, I do appreciate a subscribe um, so that I can bring you more of these. That'd be cool. Doing pretty well on that front lately, like gotten a decent amount of subscribers. And I wanted to say thank you to all of you guys who have subscribed. Um, but if you haven't, you know, you know, just it's really easy. Just hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit that bell so that you're notified of like when... Uh, new streams come out for those of you who haven't been here before I usually do these on Tuesdays and Fridays and um, you know it's not always coffee painting but lately I've been I've been doing a fair share of them because they're fun and they turn out uh, well you know I've been getting some good feedback on them and um, and I just enjoy them if you guys enjoy them I'll keep doing them if you guys are bored of them or whatever I'll move on to something else and I'll just do these on the side or something that, that's cool too but you guys, you guys seem to be okay with them. Freaking cat first stuck in my coffee again. <laughs> hey, haters in the house. Cool. Coffee on a bourbon. Yeah. Somebody's having hamburgers and potatoes. Nice. Man, that does sound good. Grilling. 
it has been it has been a weird winter around here it has been like in the 70s lately around here it's ridiculous like it is grilling weather and it's not supposed to be in this uh this part of the country like in february we usually have some of our coldest temperatures and here it is basically spring already that groundhog or whatever you know i should paint a groundhog um anyway that groundhog like i guess didn't see its shadow i don't i don't know how that works but yeah it, it's basically spring already like i'm itching to get out in the kayak which is my thing um go for walks and hikes and stuff like that um I'm, I'm kind of an outdoorsy person, not like, it's not like I go camping or something like that every week. It's not, it's not like I'm out there, uh, I don't know, like rubbing two sticks together to create fire or anything like that. Not, nothing like that. It's just, uh, I, I enjoy being outdoors and I, um, I spend so much time working at a computer that I do like to go outdoors as often as I can, um, especially during the warmer months. Uh, so I, I enjoy things like kayaking and hiking and camping you know i enjoy grilling grilling is like my favorite way to cook food to be honest there's like 90 spots for the contest uh you definitely have a great shot yeah there's 94 uh thanks from uh yeah there's i don't know if you looked it up but um it's called the whiskey wall of wonder so you can look uh you can actually google that and uh, see what other people have submitted in the past and stuff. I do think coffee paintings are probably kind of unique, but there's some stiff competition in there. There are some people who are really good. And I've seen people do watercolors, so it's not that far off, like, as far as affixing a label um, to it. So, like, I, I don't think, like, I've got too crazy of an idea here. Um, some people actually do sculpting, um, which would be kind of cool. Like, my dad actually submitted. <laughs> my, my dad um he does a, a little bit of sculpting and um he you know he saw that i was doing this and he's like yeah i'm gonna submit something too so he submitted some uh some bottles as well so it, maybe he might get into it and not me i don't know we'll have to see but certainly if he creates something cool i'll let you guys know you guys have seen some of my dad's artwork in the past um oh yeah so like i don't want to spoil it because like i don't know when we're gonna do it but yeah, it's not too much to spoil it. I, we may forget to do it. But um, my dad is a left-handed drawer, and um, I'm right-handed. So we were thinking we could do a video where he's drawing with his left hand, and I'm drawing with my right hand side by side, and we're drawing the same picture. I I don't know when I'm going to do that, but that's something he said he would do. So I think it'll be fun since he's a lefty and I'm a righty. All right, so we got a bit of a – we got a bit of a – box in here now um again the the idea is that in the first layer you're just trying to kind of get in a base tone that you can come back over with um darker darker paint darker coffee basically um and get some uh, really darker tones in there and i think that that's something that i do uh better than some of the other coffee artists i've seen out there and some of the other coffee artists i've seen they really struggle with getting dark values in and um, that's that's kind of sad. I I wish I could like, you know, pull them to the side. Maybe I'll shoot them an email. All of them, <laughs> like basically the entire internet of coffee paintings. Um, but whenever I see somebody stop, kind of like at this layer level, right? Like they haven't put in the darker values and, and such. I um, I want to tell them like, look, you can take it further. Um, and I I get it. Like they may not realize that you have to. Um, there are some tips and tricks to uh, getting those darker values in there. You really have to kind of mix this um, coffee just so. And yeah, pull the cat hairs out of it first. <laughs> but there, are, there definitely are some tips to this. Like, at some point, I need to just do like a just a straight up tutorial video. Like, do one of these about uh, coffee painting and not make it a live stream. Just be like, oh, you know, not talk about my week or things like that. Just talk strictly about what I'm doing here with the uh, copy paint. Hey, Richard. Richard's in the house. Yay. Uh, we got Because of Ken in here. B-I-C. Um, lefty tap rights, too. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of interesting. I've talked before about how um, 
left-handed people, they just kind of see the world completely differently. And they do paint and draw differently as well, which I find fascinating. Like, you can ask them to draw a cube, and they'll just draw it in a completely different perspective. Like, you know, they'll show the sides of it in a different way than somebody who does a right um, thing. Uh, Hater says, Jeremy, I want to express my gratitude for the live streams you do for us, man. As someone who has uh, been feeling quite stressed due to work, uh, getting your stream notification of another copy. <laughs> um, yeah, I, hey, I, I really appreciate that feedback. Um, I appreciate all you guys. Um, I've talked before about how this is really the highlight of my week. Um, I look forward to these things. Um, it's not to say that life is miserable when I'm not doing these paintings, but yeah, I'd rather be doing these paintings than anything else. One of these days, maybe. I'll, uh, I'll have so many of these paintings done, I can just kind of live off of these paintings. There we go. Wouldn't that be awesome if like that was your full-time job, just painting? There's people out there who do that. That'd be kind of cool. You could, like, um, if you were doing coffee paintings for a living, you could, like, drink your paint. <laughs> yeah, because the can's uh, left-handed. Cool. Yeah, so, um, you know, it probably, you're not all the same. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm making generalities here. But, yeah, uh, for the most part, you guys see the world entirely different than the rest of us. Which is cool, you know, like that makes you guys, uh, I forget, I looked up the percentage of people who were left-handed and, um, you know, there's not a lot of you guys out there. You, you guys are already unique just by uh, virtue of being you, you know. It's kind of cool. I wish I was left-handed, that'd be neat. I wish I wasn't just like a generic dude. <laughs> like, I wish I had something cool like... Like, I was left-handed or, I don't know, just something more interesting than just being me. But, yeah, I, I think that would be a fun uh, drawing for my dad to be drawing with his left hand while I'm drawing with my right hand. He doesn't draw a lot these days, but I think I can talk him into doing it. Hey, thanks, Richard. Yeah, you know, like, um, I was thinking about that the other day. Like, it is kind of weird. Um, to include you guys, like, uh, I'm, you guys are, you guys are basically in this room with me, right? And, um, you guys, so, you know, I was, I was thinking about that, um, the other day where I was like, you know, I drink and I just talk about whatever's on my mind. I don't really have like, um, a, a, a sensor or anything like that. Um, I just talk about like, I don't know, things that are going on. It's almost a bit like uh, live blogging or live vlogging, I guess you would call it, um, and, you know, I, I share with you guys things that, I mean, they're not like intimate details or anything like that. I don't, I don't think I, I, uh, I talk to you guys about like everything that's on my mind, but I do share, you know, like, you know, things that bother me, things that I look forward to, things that make me happy. Um, so in that sense, you know, it is kind of like sharing your life with people and you guys share your life with me. You guys tell me how your week's going and, um. You know, like, I actually look forward to hearing what you guys are up to, especially, like, some of you guys uh, are, um, you know, like, doing different projects. Like, uh, I saw, uh, I don't know if he's still in the room, but I saw um, Bill Gorman in here. He had, he was talking about moving to Kentucky, and he's trying to buy a house, and he's having trouble with that. I, you know, that's, a, that's an ongoing story that I'm invested in. I want to see how that turns out. Hey, Kevin's in the house. How's it going, man? Personal Bob Ross? Ah, I wish. Paint that happy little fox here. But yeah, it, I mean, it, it is kind of interesting, you know. But to be honest with you, like, if I wasn't talking about, you know, things that I'm thinking of or whatever, I wouldn't know what to talk about because, like, I don't know, got to fill the air with something. And, and like, I don't have a ton of interest in... in you know, like, uh, I like movies. I like, I like television. I like reading books sometimes. Um, so like, if I wasn't talking about those things, I wouldn't know what to talk about. Again, I, I don't watch a lot of sports or anything like that. I'm just basically into like pop culture. That's it. Pop culture and creating art. Like, um, 
I'm looking forward to watching uh, Dune uh, Part 2 in theaters. Anybody out there a Dune fan? That's, that's the kind of stuff I'm into. Science fiction. Like, I can talk to you guys all day if uh, you guys were interested <laughs> about uh, Star Wars or, you know, Star Trek. These are, these are things that I... Uh, X-Files. I used to watch a shit... T like, a lot of X-Files back in the day. Um, if you guys ever want to talk about X-Files, I'm I'm there for you guys. I basically have every episode memorized. Like good old Fox Mulder and Dana Scully. I used to have the biggest crush on Dana Scully. Um, she was a... She was the person that I always looked up to, like, man... That lady's got a head on her shoulders. And uh, I feel like I feel like Fox Mulder kind of like made, you know, put her put her through some uh some unnecessary um troubles. Like I, I feel like Dana Scully left her own devices, would have had like a, a promising, rewarding career in the FBI, and then uh Fox Mulder just kind of screwed that up for her. Like justice for uh, justice for Scully. That's that's what I want to say. Let's see what we got in here. Jeremy resembles the long lost friend who has been uh, rediscovered through the internet after years of separation. Aw, thanks, Hater. You know you always have the nicest things to say. Like um, Hater is like one of the nicest people. That's pretty cool. Not just here, but also on like uh, other channels I've seen him on. Um, there actually a lot of you guys in here are super nice. Uh, Richard, super nice. Uh, Kevin, not so much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I like to mess with Kevin because I know Kevin in real life. Now, Kevin's a super cool dude. Um, Kevin is a Kentucky Colonel. I don't know if you guys knew that, or I think I might have mentioned that before, but um. Kentucky Colonel like uh, Colonel Sanders. I need to I need to ask him how he became a, a Kentucky Colonel because I want to be a Kentucky Colonel too. That would be awesome. So a lot of details in this box, but I I think that um, I think you got a smaller area. Like you've got this uh, you got this face that is smaller than some of the um, animals that I've done. Uh, intentionally, you know, because I am using the uh, the nine by twelve paper, and um, I think that uh, you know, getting some of these details in early is appropriate. Where like I usually wait until there's more in the um, in the, sh the shape of the body and and things like that. But here, I feel like most of the detail is in the face, so like I I feel comfortable getting started early with that. Jeremy, the stick man. He's got a name now, Richard. His name is Geppetto. Uh, if you uh, watch or uh, take each video, Luke, a flip book, watch and see what he does. Huh. A flip book. With the, uh, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Want to find some Kentucky points? What did... Cesar has documents previous. Are you talking about like... Um, like uh, Clovis points, uh, Bill? Because that'd be cool. Who was I talking with? Oh, I was talking with somebody recently about Frank and Jesse James. <laughs> like, this is, this is a weird segue. Uh, I don't I don't know how I got thinking about this. Oh, Bill Gorman uh, was talking about Kentucky points. So in my mind, that translated to like uh, Clovis points, which are like arrowheads. Um uh, the Indians had, um, and then somehow that transitioned in my mind to lost treasures. And I was talking with somebody recently about Frank and Jesse James and how, um, their parents were from Kentucky, from the Kentucky area. Like they had met at some Kentucky school, I think, and, uh, got married around here. So the idea is that maybe Frank and Jesse James hid some loot around here. Yeah, okay, he was talking about arrowheads. Hey, thanks, Heidi. Yeah, Richard, a, a flipbook would be cool. Yeah, um, so 
uh, Frank and Jesse James uh, may, according to the internet, of course, this is just legend, right? Like, I, I have no reason to actually believe this, but they may have hidden a cache of, uh, like, gold around here in Kentucky somewhere. And um, I don't know how I got into that conversation, but I was thinking about that. And um, there actually was a, a cache of gold recently found in Kentucky. Uh, you can look it up. It's called the Great Kentucky Hoard. That was found on, like, some farmland. And it's from, like, the Civil War time. And I wonder, I wonder if that wasn't, like, Frank or Jesse. Because they, they didn't say anything about it. They just said that all this gold was found on this uh, farmland here in Kentucky. And, and it, it makes me wonder, like, is that Frank and Jesse James loot? I don't know. I love stories like that, though. I'm a treasure hunter at heart. Cute fox. I bought my dog a uh, new foxy toy. She loves it. Cool. I love foxes. Like I said at the beginning of um, the stream, it's kind of my spirit animal. Because, like, you always feel lucky when you see a fox out in the woods. You always feel like, I don't know, like you just saw it caught a leprechaun or something. Because <laughs> they make it hard. They, they don't just come out and say hi, you know, all willy nilly and stuff. They, uh, they, they, they hide, you know, Let's see five mile cave. Hmm. Loot quickly down. I don't know what you mean by five mile cave. There might be a cave in this area. There is a legend. So I live in the uh, central Kentucky Lexington area. There is a legend that um, Lexington is built over a cave system and, and that there's like cool stuff down there. I don't know if any of that's true. I'm just saying I read that somewhere. There's a book called Weird Kentucky and that was in it. Of course, like, you know, there's all kinds of like urban legends around here. Like, um, you know, everything from like lost loot to uh bigfoot to aliens and not mothman mothman's like a west virginia thing but there's like probably mothman equivalent for kentucky but i like those kind of stories too um you know i'm a little bit older but back in the day when i was younger and stuff i used to really be into those stories you know because i was a big x-files fan watched a lot of x-files and just kind of wanted to live x-files Yeah, I think this is looking cool. Now, because it's so dark through here and I haven't finished it up, it kind of looks like a raccoon right now, which is also a, a picture I plan on doing. I plan on doing a raccoon in the future. Uh, Kevin says, legend says there are sh sh shoshes in a great dome cave. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's supposed to be like a big cave system underneath this town. Like I'm waiting for, like... <laughs> um, Curse geography, lots and lots of caves. Yeah, so I'm waiting for, like, uh, all right, so this is a little bit old, but uh, you guys remember Buffy the Vampire Slayer, right? Like, that whole that whole town was built over a hell mouth. That's what I'm waiting for um, to happen around here. I'm waiting for the ground to just open up and just kind of, like, suck all of this town into the ground. That's that's what I see in my mind. My In my mind, this entire town that I live in uh, is built over a hell mouth. <laughs> we have a fox on our property that we catch every now and then and I, on game camp. Yeah, see, that that's cool. That is awesome. And that's almost how, how you have to catch them. Like, you just have to get lucky and, and see them on a game camera or happen to, like, you know, accidentally walk into one. It, it does feel like it's, it's, um, um, what's the term? Like a, like an omen, like a good luck omen or something to encounter a fox. And that's what I'm saying. Like they're, they're very cool. Um, it's either a fox or like a raccoon is my spirit animal. I can't decide which, but they're, they're very similar creatures. You know, I think foxes, foxes are cool.
I am not going to make the lame joke tonight where I ask, what would this fox say? <laughs> yes, I'm going to make that joke, but <laughs> I didn't, you know. I feel bad for making that joke. <laughs> what, what would this fox say? <laughs> Oh yeah, Kevin, like exactly. The the Corvette Museum here in uh Kentucky just the ground opened up underneath and just kind of sucked all of that stuff in. Um I, I forget how many priceless cars were like just basically sucked into the ground. That's what I'm talking about. They we're like built over a hell mouth. Just straight out of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I love that show. Where whatever happened to Sarah Michelle Geller? That was my other crush. Uh, Dana Scully and um, Buffy from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Those were my two main crushes back in the day. And I don't, I know what Scully's up to. She's she's been in some TV shows. Um, she was on like uh, The Crown as uh, Margaret Thatcher. Like who would have thought that back in the day? Um, but I, I don't know what where Sarah Michelle Gellar is nowadays. I'm sure she's doing something. Probably something important. Usually when people fall out of the public eye, they're doing like charity work or something like that. Kentucky has a goat man. Oh, I'm going to have to look that up. That sounds awesome. There's a thing. Uh, I don't know if people still call it that, but back in the day, they used to call it legend tripping. That's where you would um, follow up on like one of these urban legends. Like, I don't know, like uh, say... Uh, you go to a cemetery at night or, and you sit on a person's gravestone or whatever, and that person's supposed to reach up and grab you. So that's the urban legend. So people would do these things called legend tripping where they would go and they would try to do that just to see if like old man Smithers or whatever his name was would reach up and grab you from beyond the grave. So if there's a goat man out there, I'm looking for goat man. That's the kind of legend tripping I'm into. But yeah, I, I would totally do that. I like things like, even though I'm not really superstitious, like I don't really believe that some of these places are haunted or anything like that. I would totally go to like a haunted house, um, like a real haunted house type deal. That would be a lot of fun. Just because like, I don't know, I'm pretty open-minded. I mean, I'm kind of skeptical, but I'm also pretty open-minded. So like, I'll, I'll give it a shot. It'd be fun. Slime like a fox. It was a banger song. Hmm. The fox has an Egyptian feel. It does have an Egyptian feel. It does. It's kind of got a um. Ah, oh, what's that god's name? I, Anubis. It's kind of got a, a, an Anubis look to it. Not intentional. I think it'll soften up a little bit here in a but he's got very angular features at the moment. We'll see how it goes. They had their den on our neighbor's property. We'd see them twice a day coming and going. We haven't seen them in a little while. Uh, now it's only been at night. Well, I hope you see them again. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that like uh, foxes are kind of my spirit animals because I do run into them at like a local park. I don't see them all the time, but every now and then, like, and I, I feel like when I do see them, it's going to be a good week and stuff. Uh, so I go looking for them. But like every now and then I'll see them. And uh, it's just it's just awesome, you know, because it, re it really does feel like encountering something that um, you're not really meant to see as a mere mortal, you know, like when you encounter a fox, it's a special day. That's how I look at it. A little bit of a chin going in here. A lot of times these uh, these things are kind of hard to paint or draw. Um, you know, I, I've been getting better at it over the uh, the past year or so that I've been doing uh, animal pictures. But I mean, I it's, it's not like I I spent a lot of time even when I was young drawing animals and stuff. I was <laughs> I was busy drawing ninjas and you know, comic book stuff and, and things like that. Um, it's only been over the last year that I really started getting into like drawing wildlife and 
is kind of interesting because like there's a fine line between this fox and like drawing a dog you know it's like um you have to get things right you have to get the proportions right you have to get the features right um like in this in this fox there's some markings that have to be in there for you to know it's a fox otherwise it could be like i don't know like a wolf or like um a dog or you know even a weird looking cat um like um i did a copy painting a couple of weeks back of a chipmunk everybody thinks it's a freaking squirrel and it's like no it's a chipmunk you know because it's got these stripes in it and it's like that that's the kind of stuff that i'm talking about you have to make sure that you get the features that are kind of like the telltale things that it's a fox i love that emoticon thank you richard yeah it, it, it's kind of it's he's got he's got a triangular face you know That's just how these foxes are. So, you know, composition wise, you've got, you know, basically a triangle there. These things aren't by, by accident, guys. It's, uh, it's almost like I put some thought into it, you know? But yeah, um, foxes are triangles, basically. Freaking cat fur. I got to keep the cat away from my art supplies. You know, where is the cat tonight? That cat's always up to no good. I don't trust the cat. The cat's always evil. I think if I disappeared off the face of the uh, earth, the dog would definitely notice. The cat would not care. Okay, Larry says, I've had too many naughty dreams about Sarah Michelle uh, Geller. Is it Geller or Geller? I think it's Geller. Uh, from the movie uh, Cruel Intentions. Cruel Intentions was a good movie. I agree. Yeah, I like that movie growing up. And, um, you know, uh, Selma Blair also. Um, she was in that movie. I long time crush on her. Um, she's got some sort of disease now like i forget what it's called but she's having some issues so hopefully she gets better i always liked uh summer blair also from like um she was in that movie uh uh hellboy in, in the original uh hellboy that was such a good movie i love that movie yeah if you guys ever want to talk comic book movies i that's that's actually my entire expertise. I don't know how to draw pictures, but I can talk to you guys about comic book movies any day. Hellboy was a great movie. Um, Hell, Hellboy is a great comic. Yeah, starting to get a starting to get a fox in here. I am drinking bourbon tonight, by the way. Put that in the shot right there. There you go. <laughs> I like to give a shout out to the people in the room and the bourbon that I'm drinking in Geppetto. He does look like he's doing a river dance. You know, um, last year for St. Patrick's day, I, uh, I did an old man in a pub. Maybe I'll try to do some uh, river dancers. Because th that would be kind of, kind of cool. They have these like very colorful outfits. Um, proper river dancers. I don't know what they're called. Are they called river dancers? There are some people who are really good at that. I don't think I could do that. What's it called? The ta tap dancing stuff. Um clogging clogging maybe that seems like a thing um i appreciate cloggers i think that's cool um especially like um you know like just modern cloggers so like clogging was probably a lot more popular back in the day it's kind of like a retro kind of dance thing and um i appreciate modern cloggers it's like kind of a throwback to a, a different time um, I might have mentioned, I might have mentioned on this channel that I'm into uh, postmodern jukebox. 
uh, which is kind of like a um, a uh, like a retro take on modern music. Uh, like they might they might do like a Snoop Dogg song, uh, but in a nineteen twenty style. Uh, that's the one that's stuck in my head. So like there is a song by Snoop Dogg. Um, talking about like what you're gonna do with that big uh, big fat butt but then they postmodern jukebox will make a 1920s version out of it and it's just it's just great it's, it's really great i suggest you guys look that up maybe let me finish my picture first but the very next thing that you watch after this on youtube is postmodern jukebox um i really like them and they have like a lot of the clogging um in their stuff because they do like a lot of old like uh jazz renditions of uh modern songs and and um you know the whole tap dancing thing it, it's just really cool i i can't really explain it you guys are gonna have to go and watch it yourselves but postmodern jukebox it, it, i highly recommend it it's a whole classic thing you know like i like i like old classic stuff old classic music old classic dance old classic art Um, I like doing traditional art I'm just with coffee. That's all. That's, it. that's the only weird thing that I do is I, you know, I had coffee instead of paint, but otherwise it's, it's pretty straightforward and traditional and classic. I just love that stuff. I like that as a contrast to like the, the types of stuff that we have to deal with in this world, which is like, you know, very stressful. Like, are we going to blow ourselves up with AI? I don't know. Like that, that kind of stuff stressful. I try not to think about that. I'd rather just. You know, take it back to a simpler time when people painted with coffee. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Sometimes I just ramble. Uh, vloggers, ouch, that's corporal punishment. Yeah. Flogging is bad. Jeremy, like old time piano sheet music, piano scrolls. Yes, that kind of stuff. Oh, you know what? Speaking of like old time piano music. Um, I don't know if you guys ever watched Westworld. Uh, it was such a crime that they canceled that sh that show. I love Westworld on HBO. Um, but yeah, so they did, um, you know, old time piano renditions of modern songs like Radiohead or you know, um, uh, Rolling Stones or uh, I don't know all the different things that they did, but they did it, and uh, I love that kind of stuff. I, I love. Uh, when they take modern music and they make it old-timey. It's good stuff. Uh, Hater says, despite my skepticism towards uh, superstitious uh, superstitions, I found myself unexpectedly catching a bouquet of flowers at my friend's wedding yesterday. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know if you mentioned if you're... Um, if you have a significant other hater, but it does sound like that you're going to... That's the whole thing when you catch the bouquet. That's that's coming in your future. Good luck. <laughs> Westboro, uh, vintage AI. Yeah. Man, that was such a good show. That that sucks that they canceled that. They should make a movie out of that, to be honest. I feel like they left it in a spot where they could make a movie out of it. I mean, you know, the first season. The first season was the best. Um, I can kind of see why they ended up canceling it. Um, not to get too nerdy on the um, on on the stuff, but you know, the first season it was very much uh, you know what is real, what is not real. I love that aspect of Westworld, um, where you really didn't know what was going on, and uh, it could go either way. It was it, it really is like you know the whole philosophical question of like what is real, what does it mean to be real? All of the all of those things are great in sci-fi. And then, you know, subsequent seasons still had a little bit of that, but then they kind of went the route of, um, I don't know, like Blade Runner or something like that, um, which is cool. You know, it's it's fine. It's just, um, it's not the same, you know, like the first season of Westworld was very much like, uh, uh, like Inception. Yeah. So it was, it was a lot like Inception where you didn't know what was real and what wasn't, you know, what's a dream, what isn't, what is real, like who's real in this show. 
there was a lot of that in the uh, first season of Westworld. And honestly, they could just stop there. They could just stop with the, the first season of Westworld. But they didn't. And, um, you know, it became very future Blade Runner kind of thing, which is which is okay. It's just not as... It's not really the Westworld that I enjoyed. But I wish... I wish they had kept going with it. They they stopped at a um, they stopped at a point where it just feels like you want more. Like they actually did better with the last season, and you wanted to see more of it. I don't know. They're always canceling my shows. <laughs> they leave me with these like I don't know these show holes. I mean, you guys have heard that term. I hate it. I hate a show hole. Like when you watch something, you're really into it. And then like it either, you either run out of shows or it gets canceled on you and stuff. And you're left wondering like, oh man, what am I going to do with my life now? I felt that way recently. Like, um, well, a couple of times recently, I went back and I watched a couple of shows that I had seen recent. Well, I had seen in the past couple of years. Um, like there was no reason for me to go back and watch them, but I did, uh, just to pass the time. Um, I think I mentioned one of them previously, uh, Community. That's such a great show. But I finished watching that, and I'm like, oh, man, this sucks. I'm never going to see these people again. And then the other one, um, I, I went back and rewatched Daredevil just because uh, Disney or, like, the MCU is doing more with Daredevil characters. So I kind of wanted to get kind of refreshed in my mind where Daredevil was in the uh, series and so on because they they – They've made the Netflix version of Daredevil canon to the MCU, so I kind of wanted to just kind of brush upon that. And again, you know, it was pretty cool. And then, like, ran out of episodes, and it's like, ah, I will never see these people again, and, you know, all that stuff. It, it just sucks. So, uh, back to the picture. Down here underneath the chin, it should be kind of dark. That's what I'm kind of working in here. Some detailed fur where it's a little bit darker. Catching more of the shadow. Some of this up here should be kind of dark as well. Anyway, I do ramble, sorry. Um, I should probably talk more about the picture I'm working on, but let's see. I'm gonna ask uh, AI what AI's IQ is. <laughs> Called you a scholar, nice. I reckon that's, uh, thank the ladies, thanks Richard, uh, sapient, nomad, hounds, bark, foxes, say, nee, 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 <laughs> I, I can't do it. That sounds, that joke sounds funnier than it reads. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I'm trying to remember what a fox does sound like. It does sound kind of like. They don't sound like what you would think they would sound like. They sound like a squeaky toy, really. So, they're weird. I don't know. I do like how this is dried. Like, this is really nice. This needs to come up a little bit. I feel like this is a, this is a good base here for doing some more work. And, in fact, I'm going to grab and see if I can get a little bit more. pull a little bit more down here. See if that gets a little bit darker. I like in these pictures um, the chest area where it's really dark. I like to uh, create this kind of like pulling effect. So how's everybody's week going so far? I mean, it is Tuesday. We're kind of like getting into the thick of it. Um, I know that my week's going okay. Again, I don't really know how next week's going to be because I am waiting to hear back from that uh, Maker's Mark challenge. Um, the other thing I'm waiting to hear back from is that uh, I did, um, I was on the fence. I, I don't know if I mentioned this on, like, I don't know. I feel like I tell you guys a lot, but I forget what all I tell you guys. So um, I may have uh, forgot to mention, I did volunteer to go to Comic-Con this year. Um, 
I don't know if I mentioned that. I was on the fence about whether or not I wanted to. Uh, I, I've done that in the past and I enjoyed it. Um, but I didn't know if I wanted to go as a paying customer this year or go as a volunteer. So the benefit, the benefit of a paid cu customer is obviously you don't have to do anything. There's no responsibilities. Uh, so that's always nice. And, um, you know, it is nice just to walk around as like, you know, just, just a regular person at, uh, Comic-Con, um, you know, you get to go and do all the things and, and stuff just like, you know, like everybody else. Um, uh, now the benefit to volunteering is that you kind of get this behind the scenes look. Um, and, uh, you know, you do a little bit of work, but it's not bad. It's like you, you wait, like you might, you might, um, walk around with like the celebrities if they need anything like maybe they need like a bottle of water or something you'll go fetch them a bottle of water or if they need something um some supplies or something that they left in their car you may go fetch that for them you know little things like that you're just basically a gopher <laughs> i should paint a gopher um but you also get to see some of the behind the scenes stuff so like this this last comic con i went to the year before as a volunteer, I fell in with this group of other guys that were like professional volunteers. It was so weird. Um, so these guys, they literally go to every single comic con they can sometimes traveling, sometimes getting on a plane and flying to a place just to volunteer, just to be around the celebrities. Okay. And it's not just like they love celebrities. Um, that's part of it. Okay. They, they, they are definitely like fans, right? But the other thing is part of it's like a business to them. So what they do is um, the celebrities at Comic-Con, they usually charge uh, for like signing merch and things like that. So like they'll sign a poster for you. Like say, say you went to um, a Comic-Con where Chris Evans is, the guy who played uh, like Captain America. Um, you can pose for like a photo with the guy and that costs you money, but then also you can get like merch signed by the guy and that costs you money, right? But the thing is, you have to be at that Comic-Con to even be able to do all this, right? So what these guys do, these professional Comic-Con people, is they literally go around to all the different Comic-Cons just to be around the celebrities so that they can get a bunch of merch signed that they can then put on eBay or, or something like that. This one guy I was talking to, he even like has this kind of like little racket where um, he he basically has a mailing list and he tells everybody like, look, I'm going to be at this Comic-Con. These are the people that are going to be there. If you want such and such autograph, you know, Venmo, Venmo me some money. And um, he just basically goes and gets the stuff signed for them. It, it's so weird. It's so weird that there's like this little kind of like micro economy <laughs> in the Comic-Con world. But there is, right? So like you get to see that kind of stuff by volunteering that you wouldn't see as a normal person. So you get this kind of behind the scenes kind of look. Um, that's not really my thing. Like I'm not into the whole celebrity bit like other people are, but it is kind of cool to like be behind the scenes because the celebrities are also like artists, right? So like, whereas I don't really care about the movie stars so much. I mean, maybe Chris Evans, he's pretty cool. Um, I, I, I do care about like the, um, uh, what's the guy's last name? Uh, Larry Elmore. Uh, he is the guy who did all of the uh, paintings for Dungeons and Dragons back in the day. Like all those dragon paintings and everything. And I remember him from when I was a kid because I was really into like Dungeons and Dragons art and stuff. And uh, I was at a Comic-Con one time and I was just walking around. Didn't expect to run into him at all. And then here it is. I see all these paintings that I grew up with. And I'm like, Wow, that's kind of cool. Those look like Larry Elmore's pictures. And um, sure enough, I look up from the pictures and there's Larry Elmore, like right in front of me. And it's like so awesome. So even though I'm not really into like movie star celebrities, I am into like artist celebrities. So like you get that kind of behind the scenes look when you uh, when you volunteer. Um, okay, Larry says Fox would be like a Huli saying hiya. <laughs> Where's Huli at? She hasn't been in here in a while. Um, Richard says, uh, Jeremy, have you ever painted on teacups? I have not painted on teacups. That would be cool. Like, um, ceramic teacups? Or are we talking about paper teacups? What are we talking about? 
I am up for like painting on weird things. Like uh, for Easter, I should probably, you know what? For Easter, I'm going to do some egg paintings. That'll be cool. Because I have done those like in the past when I was a little kid. Um, there's a trick to like removing the egg out of it. And then you, you're left with this really cool shell. So I think I'm going to paint some eggs. Jeremy, do you have a fan on? I do have a fan on. Can you tell? Like, is it doing something weird with the lights? Or, oh, it, it's probably blowing the things behind me. Yeah, it's it's gotten really unseasonably warm in here lately. And uh, I do have a fan on. Um, because I can't say, okay, Larry, that woman never sleeps. At least that's what it seemed like. Uh, who are you guys talking about? Huli? Yeah, Huli doesn't sleep. Um... You should pitch some Forrest Finn movie ideas to the behind the scenes. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know what the rumor is these days, but I think there's a rumor running around that there's supposed to be like a, um, like a feature length, um, you know, movie or something about Forrest Finn. And, uh, some people were pitching the idea that maybe Pierce Brosnan might play Forrest Finn. And I, I don't know, like, it was a hard sell for me until I saw a picture of him, like where he was, he was done up like an old man. I'm like, Oh, okay. That might work. So Pierce Brosnan is a uh, Forrest Finn might work. Of course, like, you know, for years people have been like fantasy casting that role. Um, I think it'd be cool. You know, like, you know, Forrest Finn had a pretty cool life. It wasn't all just about that treasure. Um, I think there's a lot of story there that could be told and they would make a good movie. Um, for those of you on the discord, we've kind of talked about, um, what a, uh, what a force from movie could look like. And, um, uh, it, it's not my idea. I forget who first mentioned, maybe Ben, um, mentioned that, uh, um, big fish. I don't know if you guys ever saw that the movie with, uh, Ewan McGregor. I think that that would be a good template for a Forrest Finn movie uh, because you don't really know what's real and what's not in that movie. There's a, like a lot going on and, and so on. I think that would be a good template for like a Forrest Finn movie. Big fish. Plus he was into fishing, so it makes a lot of sense. At least in my mind, I think that that would be a good Forrest Finn movie, but who knows? Who knows what they're going to do? Uh, my fear is that there's not as many people into that, into the whole Forrest Finn story as there used to be. I feel like, you know, because they haven't given any answers about like where it was or any of that information. I feel like they've kind of lost some of the public interest, which is, um, you know, it's natural, I guess it makes, it makes some sense, but it's also a little bit disappointing because like, you know, we, we lived that treasure hunt for, I don't know, like 10 years or whatever. Kevin says, oh, I can totally dig that. Yeah. I don't know if you're talking about the, um, the Forrest Finn movie, but yeah, I think that would be kind of cool if they did a big fish type, uh, type story on Forrest Finn. Cause like, I mean, he had a lot like part, you know, it, the reason why we're talking about this for those of you who don't know is, um, you know, some of the people who watch, uh, my channel and stuff, they come from like the Forrest Finn, uh, forums and, and so on. So, you know, we all hang out there and talk about like the Forrest Finn treasure hunt that we were involved in, uh, many of us for like many years. So like, you know, I started looking into the Forrest Finn thing in 2015. So, wow, it's been like almost 10 years. Um, but we're all like really familiar with the dude's life. Right. So, uh, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, the guy was, uh, the guy had a very interesting life. I mean, the dude was like 90 when he passed away. So there's, there's like a lot there to unpack. And, and it's not like just normal. I don't know. I think if you live to be 90, it doesn't really matter, you know, who you are. You had a pretty interesting life. Like my own grandmother, she, um, she lived to be 83, I want to say. Maybe she looked to be like older than that, but, uh, 83 is what comes to mind. Um, so if you subtract 83 years, you know, they lived through like world war two, at least partially through, you know, like 
basically the depression, you know, all of these different things. You can't be old without having an interesting life, you know. And uh, for Forrest Finn, he also had extra things uh, added on top of that. So, um, hey, Hillary, how's it going? Uh, Forrest Finn movie would be The Game 2. That was a good movie with uh, Michael Douglas. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But anyway, so like, I mean, the guy was 90 years old, but also he was like a Vietnam fighter pilot, you know? Like he got shot down twice. That's a big deal. Like he, he was basically a war hero. Um, he, uh, you know, he, he ran the most successful art gallery in the Southwest. That's a big deal, you know? Like uh, basically all the celebrities, whenever they wanted some sort of like Native American art or something like that, or old west painting they went to his gallery uh you know the guy made millions of bucks on that they he basically had like an entire article written about him in people magazine i mean the guy was a big deal before he ever even did that treasure hunt so even though he probably would have had some interesting stories to tell just by the sake of being old he also had a very interesting life so uh there, there needs to be, there needs to be like a, um, friends of force appreciation, uh, like historical society or something, you know, like, cause there are some, you know, like here in Kentucky, there's probably like a, um, a Colonel Sanders, um, uh, fan society or something. Probably. I don't know. I like his chicken, but I don't know if I followed everything in his life or whatever, but somebody has. Somebody's like a super fan of uh, Colonel Sanders. Sorry, I got off on a uh, like a tangent. What are you guys talking about here? Uh, Forrest hugs me daily. Damn him. <laughs> well, hopefully that's not. Uh, I don't know, like the ghost of Forrest fan out there. That would be kind of cool. I wouldn't mind being honored by Forrestman. That'd be kind of neat. But yeah, I think there, I don't know. I think there should be like a, like a, uh, some sort of like memorial society or something for the guy. Because like, in the very least, the guy was a war hero, you know? He was a, uh, he was a pretty big deal. Uh, retired at the age of, uh, I don't know, like, 40, I think, is a uh, major in the Air Force. That's a that's big, big deal, you know? He had a very humble beginnings, you know? He started off as basically, um, you know, a teacher's son. You know, no real education to speak of. Went on to become a uh, fighter pilot major, flying some of the um, more interesting uh, planes of the time. Like, if you go off and look at all the different planes that he flew, that and, and you're into, like, avionics, um, pretty interesting life just from that standpoint. Anyway, there's a lot to appreciate there, I guess. Some would say Forrest Finn punching back with Saul. Well, <laughs> some people are frustrated with, with the guy, yeah. Anyway, I'm not here to sell you on the idea that Forrest Finn was the best guy ever, but, I, you know, I, I am a fan. I, I thought his treasure hunt was fun. I think that uh, it was a good time, at least. Um, you know, like, I sent him a couple of emails and stuff, and he wrote back every now and then. I, I think that we got along pretty good. I, you know, I, I never met the guy in person, so I wouldn't say we were, we were friends or anything like that. But, you know, told a joke or two here, here and there. But like that's the basis of friendship. Like if I tell a joke on this channel and you guys laugh at it, we're basically friends, right? That's how it goes. Um, super chicken. I don't know what you got to talk about. Hear ye, hear ye. I don't know if you're still talking about the Colonel Sanders thing. Uh, Tom says that box is looking great. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. I think this fox is turning out pretty good. There's like a lot more um, 
to put in here. So I th I think it's good enough at the point. How are we doing on time? Like I feel like I feel like it's at the point where I feel comfortable putting in you know some of the cool little um, effects. So like I do like to put in some splatter. I do like having it be a little bit ambiguous on where the um, the creature starts. Yeah, I'm calling it a creature because, like, depending on, like, what I draw at any particular moment, it could be a fox, it could be a bear, it could be whatever. But the focal point of the picture, it, I want it to be um, kind of ambiguous when, where it starts. So, like, down here, I want it to kind of, like, abstract out into these kind of um, splotches. And there are some other areas that I feel like I need to get... Kind of want maybe some non fox back here. Get that going. It might be a bit much, so let me mop that up a little bit so it's not so dark. Just some little stuff that is not fox. And then we'll let that dry. And if it's too dark, I can lighten it up a little bit. Um, or if it's not dark enough, like say I want it to look a little bit darker, I can I can do that as well. But I, I do want some background in there so it's not all, um, you know, fox and stuff. Kind of create a little bit of a value adjustment as well so that like the fox kind of stands out a little bit. I see a king, a comment, a comment, a servant. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean a king? Like here in this uh, picture? Where do you see a comment at? Is it like one of these things? I don't know, man. You guys are, you guys see some weird things sometimes. But that's cool. You know, like uh, these things are meant to be open to interpretation. So if you see a uh, comment here, if you see the pyramids, <laughs> I can see the pyramids, you know. It's it's a very, very triangular type picture. So I get that. So now that some of this stuff is darkened up. I can here mess with this eye a little bit because I didn't want that to be as light as it turned out. Some of this stuff you have to wait for it to dry before you can really get into like some of the finer details. Like um, some of these pictures, I work on them well into the night and then I get up in the morning. Uh, I can put a good five hours into doing one of these uh, coffee paintings. And I'm not sure it's necessary. It's just what I do. And the reason why is because like I constantly refine some of these uh, features. So like around this eye, for example, I want the eye to be pretty dark so that it stands out. And then um, I want some of the features to kind of blend in with that darkness. So like you can, I don't know if you want to like scrub back a little bit, you can already see how transformed this eye is just by adding in some of these darker details. And I think that's kind of important, but then I might want to blend in some of these things. So I have to wait for it to dry and then kind of like, use clear water to kind of like subtract some of that coffee if that makes sense and um so it's kind of like this push pull thing and you can't do it all at once you have to wait for some of these things to dry before you can kind of like come in and work with it to that degree and then you have to you have to also like wait for some of these lower layers to kind of dry so that you can pile things on top of them it's just the nature of it. Like it is a, like, even if you want to be like super detailed in your first pass at this, you can't really, you can't, you have to wait for it to dry. So these, uh, these pictures require patience. And you guys, you know, we've talked a, a lot about how relaxing the process is and, and everything. I, I think that that's the secret to it, you know, because you are forced to, um, to be patient with this, it, it has this kind of um, rewarding effect of like, 
I don't know, it just drops you in this zen kind of mode, you know? Like, I've got things I've got to do in life. I've got, I've got deadlines coming up. I've got projects that I'm working on and everything. I've got, I've got other things that I want to do besides paint this picture. But in this moment, it's all about painting this picture, you know? And that's, that's extremely rewarding. It's, um, this, like, even if you're not into art, you know, you can find some other sort of task that is kind of like art where you're forced into this, um, this, uh, thing where you have to be patient and like baking. There you go. Uh, that's a good one. Like say, you say, uh, you're into cooking or something like that. You know, it's not like you can just mix, um, flour and yeast together and water and automatically it's bread. No, you have to put it in the oven. You have to wait for it to dry, not dry, but cook. <laughs> um, you don't wait for bread to dry. Uh, you put it in the oven, you know, hours later, out comes bread. It's kind of like that, you know, except that you're part of the process the entire bit, like you're doing the cooking and you're not just like leaving it in an oven to cook. Does that make sense? No, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, hopefully you get the idea. It is, it is very relaxing from that standpoint. It's almost like, yeah, it, it, I mean, cooking's probably pretty close. Maybe there's other metaphors that make more sense, but I, I'm going to stick with the cooking for now. Because it is, that is something people can relate to. Like, every most of us have cooked something. If you've never cooked anything, I, I encourage you guys to cook something. Puppy Monster keeps you busy. Nice. So, there goes that. Don't want to use my brush. Because I do want some tone to be in here. I don't want it to be all white. And then, so I, I just added some tone here, but I, I don't want it to be like that. So I'm going to let it dry. And then I'm going to come back with some clear water and kind of erase some of it out of it. So. I want this to be super white down here, but I don't want the bridge of the nose to be super white, if that makes sense. Jeremy, you mentioned earlier Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, oh, did I say Friday? I'm so sorry. Uh, no, uh, you're entirely right, Larry. Um, it is Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sorry. Uh, force a habit. I used to do Fridays. I am not doing Fridays now. I'm doing Thursdays. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I come in here and I'm like, Hey, it's, uh, it's Tuesday night and it might be Monday night. So like I make mistakes like that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a creature of habit. Yes. Uh, Larry is right. I meant, um, Thursdays. Thursdays is a new night. That gives me Fridays to do artsy stuff that, um, uh, seem to be the thing. It's like everybody does, um, Friday nights for like art gallery type stuff. Yeah, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but I drink a lot, so <laughs> you know, I may I may misspeak every now and then. Truth is that I only drink so that I can uh, cover up the fact that I uh, make mistakes when I talk. I'm just joking. Yeah, they do both start with Tuesdays and Thursdays. Both start with the tea. That's, that's great. That's a perfect way to look at it. So for you guys who want to follow what I'm doing and you want to tune in for every single one, I do streams whenever there's a tea in the, in the day. Right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, just the, just the tea days. All right, so this is probably dry to the touch. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do... Just to kind of show you, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but I'll come in with some clear water and so I'll get that wet and then I'll come back and mop it up a little bit. And I don't know how much of that translated to camera, but here in person, 
this looks a little bit lighter now, which is what I was hoping for. So that's how you can kind of blend some of these areas. So, you know, with coffee, you do put things down in kind of like pools of stuff. Boozy Tuesdays with Jeremy. I love it. <laughs> Boozy. Uh, Friday nights are good for uh, Mrs. Parnell hunting. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> that's not up to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, you know, with the coffee... But the coffee, when you work to get something dark, you kind of have to like let it pull and then hope it dries dark, right? And it's, it's kind of weird. Like you're not really painting as in like, you know, painting or whatever. You're just kind of like dabbing on these dark areas. So you're kind of dabbing these spots in and you hope that they dry pulled like, like this did. This dried kind of nice and dark. So you're hoping that these other areas kind of like dry um dark as well and then you know as they dry you may want to redirect some of this and kind of like so this area here is hard to see on camera but this is kind of like a little bit a little rough right so i can come in with a little bit of water kind of smooth that out and then it becomes more blended now this is the kind of finishing effects that really actually i have no business doing right now this is stuff that I have to wait until the picture is mostly done before I put in those kind of finishing details. But, you know, that's kind of a, an idea of like what all is involved in these things. That's why it ends up taking, you know, several hours. But it's fun. It, it's it's kind of cool. I, I like how these things turn out when I do that. And, you know, like I've, I've looked at some coffee paintings that uh, people do. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> You're fine. Um, I looked at some coffee paintings that other people do, and some some people are, you know, they do treat it like serious art, and they do put in, like, the time and effort and stuff. But then also some of them, they kind of phone it in, and they don't treat it as much like real art as I think that they should. Like, you can take it to another level from what they're doing. Not to say my stuff's perfect or anything, but it is kind of better than some people's. Pat myself on the back there. But then there is some stuff that just kind of blows mine away. So, like, i to be a little humble. Which, you know, I am definitely very humble when it comes to my work. I know that there's people out there who just really, really, really good at what they do. And I hope... I hope some of that is like just putting them in the time and effort. Like when I look at other people's art and I, and I'm like, um, I never really get jealous about it. I, I, but I do look at it like, man, I wish that I could, like, I, I don't resent them for creating better art than I, I do, you know, like they put in the time and they put in all of that stuff. Um, more I look at it as like, uh, man, I hope that I get to that point someday. And that has nothing to do with them. It's just uh, it's a personal goal. Like, I hope that I can get my stuff to be as good as theirs at some point, you know. So, like, I, I never, I, I'm never jealous or, um, I'm never jealous of other people's work. But I think, I think it's fair to say envious. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Like, sometimes I'm envious of other people's work. Like, man, they are so good. And I think that that's just giving them credit, you know, for their amazing stuff. All right. So up here in the ears, there's also a lot of dark. And this is this is tough because there's, like, a lot up here that should be dark. So I'm just going to kind of blot all this in. And hopefully this ends up looking okay. Yeah, these darker areas create some really good contrast. And um, the, so why is it important that you put these dark? Uh, yeah, right, yeah, Rome. Yeah, exactly. Dabbing. It's, it's like dabbing. Make a coffee, a coffee pencil for dark areas. I should invent a coffee pencil. What would that look like? I bet you I could do that. Or like a, like a, a pen, like a coffee pen 
where instead of ink, it squirts, uh, like you can use like a, um, you can use a pen, um, like one of those, uh, fountain pens or, or something like that. Not fountain pen, but whatever the uh, quill pen is. I don't know the terms. Uh, you can use one of those with a uh, coffee. I think I've tried that before. I don't, I don't know if it works as well as a brush, but you could, you could do it. I wonder if you can invent a pen that squirts coffee instead of ink. That'd be cool. But yeah, so the, the dark areas are important. Um, I should say that because like without the dark areas, you have a very flat picture. You need these dark tonal value values to, um, create a sense of depth and create a sense of light and shadows. Uh, it's, it's definitely something that you need in your picture. And if you're curious if that's true, go and look at any of my pictures where I do a lot of shadows and light and stuff like that. And look at the views. Like, I mean, that kind of tells you all you need to know. Like people respond to pictures that have that kind of level of like, I wouldn't say detail, but that sort of like, um, interests as far as like lights and shadows and so on yeah i don't know what i'm saying <laughs> sometimes i say something and i think about it and i'm like man that just that just sounds dumb jeremy <laughs> hillary's got a feeder furry beast night all uh great fox jeremy thank you very much hillary i appreciate that um hopefully your uh your animals are doing well tonight Take care. I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back Thursday, not Friday. Man, I can't believe I made that mistake. People are going to tune in Friday and wonder where I'm at. It was kind of weird this Friday. Um, not doing a live stream because I've done them on Friday so, so much. I did do some art stuff on Friday. So that's kind of cool. But... Yeah. I don't know. Maybe every now and then I'll, uh, I'll just kind of get bored and do a live stream anyway on a Friday, but I want to, I want to set expectations. I don't want you guys to expect me to do a live stream on Fridays. I think that's important. Um, it's, it's respectful to you guys, uh, kind of lets me know what I should be doing. Things like that is to kind of give you guys an expectation of when I should be on and stuff. I mean, you know, like I might get sick and not, not be able to show or I might just be busy and not be able to show or whatever, but I think it's important to set expectations. It's just common courtesy. I want to be respectful of your guys' time as well as my own. All right, Larry's taking off as well. Have a good one. Appreciate you uh, tuning in, Larry. Bill says, when I was getting my extra blood drain, someone suggested using the blood to paint with. There was somebody who did some uh, blood painting at a gallery that I went to recently. I think I mentioned that. What I'm wondering is, like, you got your extra blood drain. What is extra blood? Like, is that just blood you're not using? Like, how does that work? I have never heard of that term before, extra blood. Uh, Kid asks, uh, how was your live model drawing Friday, uh, uh, Jeremy? Um, Kid's got a great memory. So that is what I was supposed to do. Um, I, I didn't make it to that. I wasn't feeling very well. Um, that is why I wanted to take the Friday off. Um, but, like, I wasn't feeling very well, and I didn't know if I was sick. It turns out I wasn't really sick. I just wasn't feeling very well that evening. Um, but I didn't want to show up and, like, get a bunch of other people sick if I was sick. So I decided to not go. So I could have actually done a live stream, but, you know, I didn't want to confuse you guys. But, no, I didn't go to the live model thing. I kind of wish I had, because I wasn't really sick. I thought I was going to be sick, but I wasn't. So, missed opportunity. I should have just, like, I don't know, just <laughs> drunk people anyway. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I still want to do that. I still want to have that experience where I go and draw people in public and stuff like that. It, it didn't happen. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I'll let you down. 
because I what I want to do is I actually want to get some um some camera footage of that and uh so that I can make like a standalone video of me drawing a person um and all that but didn't happen so I don't have any of that footage sucks Q says, uh, I'm having dinner with my bestie. Happy painting. Cool. Awesome. How often do they do those live model things? So that's a great question. So this one was, so this was a, um, so the gallery that this was at, uh, they call it like the fourth Friday. So, um, I don't know how often they do the live model drawing for the fourth Friday. Usually they have something else going on. So it's like they always do something on the fourth Friday, but it's it's different what they do each time. So I wouldn't say that they have the live model drawing for that. However, I was looking into it and um, there's a meetup. I don't know if you guys like. Like ever since Facebook groups came out, uh, I don't feel like meetup.com is as popular as it used to be in the past, but uh, I always liked it. And um, there was a meetup group where they did have some live model drawing um, through that. I don't know how active they are, but that's what I was going to look into. So I'm not giving up on the idea of doing live model drawing. Um, I just have to do a little more research to hunt down what's involved in that. And then, you know, the other thing is, I don't know if I want to go to all of them. Um, <laughs> Kevin remembers the margaritas. Yes. <laughs> so I don't know, like, um, I got it. So some of these, like, these live model drawings and stuff, like, that one that I was supposed to go to on Friday, it was, it was different because they were clothed models, right? So, like, obviously, I mean, you guys know how art world works most of these aren't you know whenever you do figure drawings um it's usually like the full like nude figure um so i'd have to i'd have to do some research on you know whether whether the live model drawing is that or if it's full like closed or or what because like i don't i don't know like it would be kind of like awkward for me i don't i'd have to get over it like you know being an artist is being an artist, right? So like you have to, you have to be okay with, uh, you know, the human body. Um, but also I, I think that would be kind of weird for me. So like, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I, I feel like uncomfortable for the model, but I, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to put some thought into that. But anyway, that's what I imagine many of these things are. I'll probably still go and do it, but I'd have to put some thought into it. I'd have to do some more research. There we go. That's the best way to put it. Hammer Time says, great drawing as always, sir. Thank you, Hammer Time. Yeah, Kevin, those margaritas were really good. Um, I forget what margarita mix I used for it, but I'm going to have to find that and, and do that again. That was good. I picked it up at like Kroger, so it can't be anything special. But those margaritas were really good. I think it was like Tito's tequila, by the way. If it matters. But yeah, to answer your question, uh, kid, I do think I can find another live model drawing thing. And, you know, it's not it's not like there's anything special about these sessions. It's basically that you have a model, they stand up there, they do a pose, and sometimes they, they switch up the pose out of comfort or just timing. Um, so it's a, it's a controlled environment where the model is doing this, you know, because they like were asked to, but really you can go to a public place and just draw people from life without that whole organized uh, bit. So that's really where I just got to do it. I just got to stop talking about it and just go and do it because like you can do that kind of stuff anywhere. You can go to a bar and do that. You can do that in a park. You can do that at a bus station. It, it's where I want to be as an artist. So I just have to suck it up. I just have to go and do it. I wasn't feeling very well on Friday, but ultimately I kind of use that as an excuse and I'm not proud of it. Like I should have gone anyway. I do like this fox. This fox is looking cool. 
I feel like I'm going over the same areas a lot, but I, I you kind of have to here. So Bill says he had phleb, phlebo, <laughs> oh, phlebotomy, sorry, uh, blood drawing. Um, when I had mutated blood, immature blood, and too much of it after 15 years of not getting B12 because of an undiagnosed pernic, per, pernicious anemia. Think that I think with what's brain, yeah, man, that's a those are some big words there, Bill. Tough for me to say, but uh, hopefully, you're doing better. So, you got so you basically got some old blood swapped out for new blood. I, that's how I'm interpreting what you're saying. And then, you know, they, they told you to keep the blood so that you can paint with it. I guess you could. You, you technically could. It would basically be like these coffee paintings. Um, I don't know if painting with blood is something... Uh, you'd have to be... Um, I'm trying to work this... I'm trying to work out this problem, right? So, like, painting with blood is gross. But also, there's, like, some safety things there. So, like, you'd have to... Um, I mean, it's basically a biological hazard. Even if you think your blood is fine and stuff, people shouldn't be touching other people's blood. It's just not something people should do. So you'd have the biological hazard there. So like you would almost have to, um, you would almost have to lock it away, like framed behind glass, sort of, whether you'd want to or not. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't want dried blood to be out there where people are like interacting with it, I guess. That's my thought, at least. Anyway, that painting that I saw there at the gallery, I, I think it was behind glass and stuff like that. And I, I think that's almost how it'd have to be. Um, Hater says, uh, have you reached out to uh, Olivia? Is she doing, how is she doing at the moment? So she is in the process of, um, I don't know exactly when her surgery is, but she's getting like reconstructive surgery done. And I think that's the last step. Um, she had posted pictures of the burn that she got from like radiation treatment it is disgusting it's like just straight up burnt skin um like uh second degree burns at least uh i think third degree burns is like charred so it's not quite that but um first degree burn is like a like a sunburn um uh second degree burn is like blister she had blisters all over her body it's i feel so bad for her um but no she's doing well um i don't think she's gotten the um uh, the in remission uh, statement yet. Um, so that's what I'm waiting for. As soon as she gets that, the shirt comes off. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing a different shirt because I feel like that's a win, right? Uh, that's my understanding is that that's the next step is for her to get the, she's in remission. Um, but yeah, she's getting like, um, she's got like a surgery or something for like reconstructive or whatever. Uh, but I think that that's the last bit. So she's doing very well. I appreciate you asking. Um, Bill said they just drained it off until the bad blood cells were under control. They did not put it back. They threw it in the trash. Yeah, I feel like you missed an opportunity there to use the painting. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if anybody should use that stuff as a painting. Like, it sounds kind of interesting, but also it's super gross. Like, I, I, can, I can't see anybody uh, reacting to a painting like that in a positive way. I think... I think they would feel like I felt when I saw that painting. The the It was just a couple of weeks back, too. So it's fresh in my memory. I'm like, man, this is gross. Uh, the only reason I looked at that painting, to be honest with you, is it looked a lot like my coffee paintings. Um, that's kind of the color it comes out. It comes out like a, like a little bit maroon. So not quite brown like this is. But I would, it, it basically looked like this in, in terms of style. And uh, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool and stuff. And I'm, I'm like, well, I wonder if that's a, a copy painting. And then I get close and it's like, oh, that's gross. <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend it. But I guess you could, you know. Yeah, third degree skin uh, from my whole back come off. And when she, ah, gross, Bill, you're grossing me out tonight, man. Oh, that's disgusting. Came off in a sheet on the floor uh, of the tub. Burned off in the shower. Oh, man. 
Well, that sounds painful. So I, I am sorry you had to go through that. And also very gross. <laughs> So I want to kind of like uh, give a little bit more mass to the fox down here. And this is the stuff where after it like seriously dries, then I'll come back and like, you know, add some more crust to it. Um, uh, one good way to look at this is um, I like to consider the coffee as kind of like um, the crust of a creme brulee, if that makes sense. Um, so you, you do have to kind of like wait for some of this stuff to dry before you can really do much with it. But let's see if I can get. There we go. Yeah, it kind of create a little bit more form down there. Um, I think once it dries, ugh, got coffee all over me now. Uh, once it dries, I'll put some darker areas through here, but it definitely has to dry because right now it's wet. So if I put down any coffee, it's just going to kind of blur into the mass there. So I got to wait for that to dry, but I'm going to kind of create some more form coming up through to kind of like separate like where legs might be. It's still going to be abstract, but I, I feel like I'll put in that kind of little bit definition. We're probably getting to a point where I have to stop tonight uh, just to let that stuff dry and, and then I can come back and put in some of those details that you guys all love, like the coffee rings. I get so many co uh, comments on the coffee rings like um, I don't feel like I can do a coffee painting without putting the coffee rings in at this point. So like what I'm talking about is like I'll come in and, you know, I'll just like at a coffee ring or something like that. And I'll probably do more than that. But um, if I don't do that, I feel like somebody's going to yell at me. <laughs> you know, like how musicians, um, you know, like if you're like a, in a band or something, like say, say you're in a band from the 70s and uh, you got like a really great song or something like that and you sing it, you're stuck singing that song for the rest of your life. So like, even though you peaked in the 70s, um, like the Eagles, right? So they're, they're going to have to sing Hotel California for the rest of their lives. I felt like that way with the uh, coffee paintings where I have to put those little um, coffee rings in there for like any time I do a coffee painting. Just because they, they do kind of sell the idea that it's a coffee painting, you know? I like this little guy. This guy's fun. I do need to make some darker marks out here. So I do want kind of this to be darker to kind of like lighten up this area because like the the chest of the um, the fox should be kind of white. Now there's some darkness in here from like shadows and stuff like that, but I do need to like make that really super light compared to the rest. So part of my challenge, I think at this point, how are we doing on time? Okay, we're, we're doing all right. Part of my challenge is to uh, make some of these areas outside to be a little bit dark. Yeah, Kevin, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All the, um, yeah, all the co-workers love the coffee rings. I mean, it just, it feels like that has to be in there, you know? It's, it's just part of the style of the, um, of the coffee painting. Bill says that skin would have made a nice canvas if it was stretched and dried back then. What are you talking about, Bill? <laughs> All right. You started off by saying that you had, I don't know, I don't know if you gave an amount, but like, let's say it's a quart of blood or whatever that was like siphoned off of you and you're like, oh, I got this extra blood now because I ain't using it. Maybe I can paint pictures with it. But now you're talking about sloughed off skin being a canvas. That's the, what is that's disgusting, my man. Nobody would, look. All right. Here's the thing. You can create some really cool art, I'm sure, on that skin canvas that you're talking about, which is gross. But what are you, nobody's going to want that on their wall. What are you going to, what are you doing, man? <laughs> that, uh. Bill, don't do it.
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a that's probably like a uh, a biohazard of some sort. You should uh, you should not do that. The uh, painting with blood is pretty bad, but like painting on sloughed off skin. Uh, the, uh. It's Taco Tuesday. You're gonna have me barfing up my tacos, man. That said, there was this one. Um, they don't call him Wild Bill for nothing. Literally, Bill Gorman. He is he is Wild Bill. I uh, I love I love Bill Gorman. Uh, he's he's got his own channel. You can go and check it out. Um, Bill, I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk about you like you're not here, but it's with love. Um, Bill is this old hippie guy who lives in the Southwest. I, I think he's still living in a camper. I don't know. Like you might have moved since then, but the videos I recall are like when you were like broadcasting from a camper and, um, you know, you're, you're of a certain age. Um, and, uh, I always looked at it as like, man, if I live the lifestyle of Bill Gorman someday, I will not have missed my turn because like, he's just this cool old hippie dude. Right. And I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for talking about you like you're not here, but I, I think I'm being fair. He's just this really cool old hippie dude uh, who lives in the uh, Southwest. Uh, I, he's trying to move to Kentucky. I don't know if that's worked out, but anyway, point is Bill Gorman is awesome. He's a cool guy. He's definitely wild Bill. Okay. So it was a camper. All right, cool. Yeah. But it wasn't just a camper. You had that thing decked out with all this cool stuff. Like, I always thought Bill was, I don't know. You're a crazy dude. Like, I, I don't think that that's like, um, I don't think that's like uh, <laughs> saying it in a bad way. Like, you, you're aware that some of your ideas are nuts. But, yeah, everybody likes Bill Gorman. Well, not everybody, but I do. But, yeah, Bill, if... You can paint with blood. I've seen that done, but on human skin, that's just weird. Oh, I just got the joke. They don't call him Wild Bill for nothing. Painting on skin like from Silence of the Lambs. Oh, I get it. I get it. It took me a moment to get there, Kevin, but I always get there. Yeah, you're talking about Silence of the Lambs. That's a good joke. That's funny. Yeah, so I'm trying to darken up this outside because I kind of want this to be lighter. And I might have to actually come in and, like, do some detail through here to kind of clean that up a little bit. But, and then some of this, again, it's too wet now. I, I need to let it dry so that I can put in some pulling stuff. And then, obviously, there's not, like, a lot of detail through here. As soon as this dries, I'll probably put in some darker. Let me try it anyway. Probably put in some darker marks through here just to kind of give that fox some form you know he's not like a he's not like a gigantic fat fox or whatever i've never seen a fat fox to be honest maybe fat is the wrong term like big boned fox i've never seen a big bone fox i don't know but once this dries i'm gonna clean this up a little bit and um you know same same with some of these other areas Got a new puppy, 325 for an indulgent pill, turns your poop to gold. <laughs> yeah, everybody likes Bill. Bill's great. Yeah, no scars from being burned. Good. Now, I'm sorry that happened to you. I, like, I'm not, I'm not, like, making light of your burns because I know that, that that's probably terrible, and I'm sorry you had to go through that. I'm questioning your idea of using your burnt skin as a canvas. That is the, that is the weirdest thing. <laughs> but you know what? Like, hey, maybe you could. I mean, I'm... <laughs> just so I don't... I mean, I use some pretty weird stuff. Like, you know, I'm sitting here painting with uh, coffee and stuff. That's not usual. But I think that I would probably draw a line at biological 
things. Slop skin. That's just. Uh, yeah, so like just, you know, playing with the tonal values and, and so on. So this should be white. I, again, I think I may come back. I need to make this a little bit darker, I think. And then I could come back with a, a clean brush and kind of lift some of this up. I do want some of this stuff down through here to be dark, but maybe like less. Let's see. I had to use this brush maybe. And the way that would work is I can come in and just kind of wet some of this area. Right? So you come in. This is actually a tip if you guys are interested in doing these uh, coffee paintings. This is what I love about coffee. I, I, I've tried this with um, watercolor and it doesn't work as well. But with coffee, it works great. So you come in, you kind of wet these areas. And then you take your fingers, right? And you just, or you can take a paper towel or whatever. I just use my fingers. So I end up with like a bunch of coffee on my fingers, but I don't care. Um, so you lift, you get that water off. And then you can kind of just come in and mop up some of these areas. So like automatically that ends up being, you know, brighter. So you can do these after, um, after painting type, uh, effects on this stuff and it works out really well. So even though his face was kind of dark before, um, you can still kind of work in some of that lighter areas that make up a fox's face. Cause like a fox is at least partly white in the face. You know, one of the, the Disney movies that I remember, um, watching as a kid that I just loved. I don't know why I loved it so much, but I did it was uh Fox and the Hound and then also the um the Robin Hood with the Fox. Like I'll still go back and watch that on like Disney Plus. Like when Disney Plus came out and they had like their big long library of all these different shows, there was a, a couple that I went back and watched even though like nobody cared about them. Like the Apple Dumpling Gang. I don't know like You'd have to be of a certain age, but if you if you are of a certain age, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The Apple Dumpling Gang was like gold with uh, the guy who played uh, Barney Barney Fife. Um, uh, Don Knotts, yeah. The Apple Dumpling Gang is one that I really wanted to see when Disney rolled out their like long tail of like library, and then um, uh, the Robin Hood uh, Fox thing that that was like something I had to see. Treasure Warrior says, good stuff, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Rich says, wow, that's cool. I don't know if he's talking about <laughs> Bill's burn scars or not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that you're talking about Bill's uh, burn scars. Yeah, that is cool. Um, let's see. What kind of paper is that? Uh, oh, you, you're asking about this. So this is cold pressed watercolor paper. It's just generic uh, watercolor paper. There's nothing special to it. Uh, whenever I do my coffee paint, so sometimes when I'm actually doing watercolors and um, gouache, I might use like mixed media paper. Um, but whenever I'm doing the coffee paintings, uh, I use watercolor paper. And the reason why is because you want the watercolor or you want the coffee to kind of stain the paper. And uh, watercolor works very well for that. So. Uh, almost exclusively do I use a uh, watercolor paper. Theoretically, you could use other kind of papers, but I don't know. I haven't really tried. Maybe I should try. But yeah, you can kind of see like just with some clear water, you can just kind of lift some of the stuff up and kind of create, um, you know, these little patches of fur, light fur that's peeking through. Um, this effect is really good for like creating whiskers which I've done sometimes in some of these pictures that I've done. Like, I think on the chipmunk, maybe. <laughs> Need a coffee portrait of Juan Valdez. <laughs> That'd be great, yeah. I was thinking about that. Yeah, I was thinking about maybe doing a, a coffee portrait of somebody. And uh, I couldn't think of who I would be appropriate. Juan Valdez would be perfect. There's probably some other famous coffee people. I don't know. I'll have to give that some thought, but Juan Valdez is definitely up there. 
So as you can see, like this is a uh, kind of like a chisel brush, by the way. So I'm, I'm using it to kind of create like um, some patches of fur. But you see how that kind of gets a little muddled there. So uh, I just kind of clear it off. And so, and then you can kind of, so you, you use water, you put it over, it kind of becomes this puddled mess. And then you kind of like clear the water and then you can kind of mop it, if that makes sense. So anyway create some uh, cool little stuff and then you know maybe through here I might lift it up it's an awful lot like uh, when I'm doing my charcoal pictures um, oh, because I can it's taking off yeah I'm probably gonna wrap this up so uh, you know it is at the two hour mark so I'm probably gonna wrap it up anyway but uh, I appreciate you uh, stopping in uh, BIC um, I'm gonna start calling you BIC just because it's easier than because I can but anyway uh, I did want to say that, like, you can kind of lift some of this stuff up, almost like I do with the uh, kneaded eraser whenever I'm doing a charcoal picture. It's kind of a cool effect. But anyway, I'm pretty happy with the fox in the face, and there are some details I'm going to add to this, uh, you know, coffee styling it a little bit. I'm going to add a nice little crust through here in some areas, and then I might increase some of the splatter stuff around him so that he's not just so much of a, like, a wedge. Um... But that's all stuff I can do off camera. I think this is probably a good stopping point um, for the night because I do have enough detail in the face where I can do that. All important uh, thumbnail, which you know, I don't want. I don't want to throw up a thumbnail that's half finished. I do sometimes, and I don't like it. And the very first thing I do when I finish up the picture is I take that thumbnail and I put it up just so that I feel better about it. Um, but anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, done for the night. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. You guys are an awesome crowd. This was a really good stream. Um, I appreciate every single one of you guys. And, um, you know, so thoughtful conversations tonight. So that's cool. Um, but, yeah, so let me go here. Uh, there we go. All right, anyway, appreciate you guys hanging out with me on a Tuesday night. Uh, okay, Larry corrected me earlier in the uh, the broadcast. I, apparently, I said Friday. I will be back on Thursday. Okay, not Friday. We're doing Thursdays now. Um, just to kind of uh, free up my time so that I can do more artsy stuff. Hopefully, uh, I will find one of those figure art uh, drawing sessions so that I can record that. I think that that's going to be um, really cool. Um, but even if I don't do that, I'll, I'll do some other stuff. Like, um, I, I've been wanting to go to, like, some art museums and stuff. Maybe record... Uh, some some stuff there and uh maybe i'll do like a um maybe i'll do some live drawing at the art museum of artwork that's done by famous people and you guys can check that out so but these are all things i plan to do in the future just stay tuned there's some cool stuff coming but uh i appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight coffee painting of a fox um i'll post it up to the community tab when i'm done with it otherwise i will see you guys thursday um but yeah, have a good one. Bye.